Mm -hmm. um, what kind of ways could magic further technology or could technology further magic? And do you have examples of this from any settings you could think of? It's good examples. I may be hard pressed to think of the specific ones, but I think that there are a lot of ways in which you could have devices that um, are fueled by, by magic. I think uh, for those of you who are Elder Scrolls fans in Skyrim, right, you've got, or in other, uh, other versions of that series as well, you've got the Dwemer who are dwarves who have sort of gone away, but they've left behind all of these technologies. So they've got like a very cool steampunk vibe that I love. Yeah. Uh, that are fueled by magic, right? And like basically when the magic dies, you put a crystal in it, then the machine dies, right? So that's one way I think in which magic can fuel. And, that in, and in the world of Skyrim and Elder Scrolls, magic is all over the place. Technology yeah. is less so. So that's one of those instances too. And I think it's also kind of clever in that they don't really need to explain. It's like nobody really knows because they've been gone, you know, the, this race has been gone for so long and you, do, you can't fix or improve those things very easily because you don't understand them. You can use them if you're, if you're lucky. So that's sort of one, one example. And then I think the other example of using technology would be to thinking about it like oil or something like that. If you're extracting and refining, do you have crude magic and then refined magic? And then what can you do with that? I think that often plays into issues of class, which I think are really interesting of that kind of grubby, dirty magic. That's the street magic, you know, like you got a spoon and a lighter, you know, versus uh, having the, the more refined thing that would be coming, you know, through more established channels. Um, I think too, thinking about how governments would be involved either way in terms of channeling, um, channeling funds towards either uh, research in either one of those or in both of those, or they're only going to be able to fund and grant. I mean, they were doing this in the middle ages, right? Funding and granting research in certain areas. And if they throw all the money behind technology and no money behind magic, then it's more likely that magic will not get developed, right? So right. thinking through just about how all of those, those levers and gears, it's like you were saying, that mosaic approach, um, nothing ever just pops up and it's left alone and it's one area. It's always gonna be somehow tried to control and there's all these battles. I was thinking too um, about things like VHS versus Betamax or other kinds of standards, right? In which they're parallel for a little while when they both come out but for reasons, whether they're just sort of a better technology or a better version and say of magic, or whether there are other circumstances like the government coming in and picking out a winner, right? Either one of those things, it's like, well, both are viable or could be viable, but then this other one ends up winning out. And it's not that the other one goes away forever. It just gets neglected. And maybe you've got like uh, the vintage people who really still dig the magic or something like that. So yeah, there's lots of different ways. And I think that that's where too, for, for each case, I mean, it's always like with writing advice as well. It's like writing advice is always all 100% right and 100% wrong because it's, it's contextual for what it is that you are doing in that moment with that story and what you want to get out with. And that's why it's so hard, why we just don't have books on writing and then everybody turns around and writes a bestseller because it's all about being able to pick the right thing at the right time. And I think this is such a big topic that it's, it's exactly that fielding a specific, like, this is your world and this is how you want to try and bring it in. Well, let's bring it down to sort of the ground zero. How would it happen? And maybe how would it happen in this place, right? Maybe what happens in London would be different than happens in uh, upstate New York, just because of the different environmental conditions. Um, whether, you know, is there a big magic reserve uh, outside uh, Kent or something like that, right? You natural know, natural resources. Like, natural yeah, absolutely. Resources. And, and I'm so glad. Sorry, I'm so glad that you talked about um, things like funding and the conditions and that kind of thing because uh, all of those can affect whether a culture, if you have access to both technological advancements and magical advancements, uh, the culture, the religion, the um, opinions of those in power are all going to affect which track maybe is progressed. Right. The other thing I wanted to jump in on um, when you were talking about um, levels of refinement is that remember that technological processes, particularly magic in a lot of worlds is sort of one and done. You do a ritual, you wave, a, you wave your hand, you say some words and something happens. But remember that um, particularly in technology, you have different processes that reach your end product. You have refining processes, you create materials, the materials are then formed into parts and those parts are connected together. So remember that you can introduce magic at any part of that process. So you might introduce magic when you're forming the materials or when you're refining the materials or when you are putting the parts together to animate them. There's, there's all sorts of ways that the magic can get involved into technology to start you know, really, really melding them together if you have those two forces in your world. Because it seems to me, 
again, unless there are exten extenuating circumstances, that those are two very powerful forces that somebody somewhere would go, hi, I can make a lot of money if I put these right. together. Right. And that's, you know, the other thing too, is I, I like to think about magic as having uh, some sort of toxic byproduct too. It's, if it's totally clean and it's just, anybody can, can cast spells, um, it, there's not, it's not as interesting as if, sure. you know, like I, I know in, uh, I remember in the, the Dragonlance novels, right? Raceland always has this terrible physical toll when he, when he casts more and more powerful spells. It has a very, you know, embodied sort of uh, reaction for him and he gets sicker and can almost kill him. But then imagine if you're, you know, if you're magic created sludge or like that story I was talking about earlier with it creates this bramble that grows, then it becomes, there, there becomes much more of a cost of, again, of who gets to use it, who gets to choose when they use it, what that reaction is, or is it just that you dump your, your magic sludge in the river and let the town downstream worry about it, right? So there's all those kinds of questions too, in which in, if you've got both of those systems uh, working in parallel, technology, which is also producing its all, you know, an another Tolkien kind of theme, right? Tol as you build your mill, then it puts waste into the water. Well, what if you've got both of those things going parallel and it's like, well, we really, we're going to destroy this world fast environmentally if both of these continue to progress, which again would give the logic as to why, why the government or why society would want to pick a winner, right? Because you can't have both of these at the same time. These are the things too in world building projects that I'm always urging people to think about is the world shouldn't, it's often useful to have the world on the, on the edge of change, of some sort of change. And this kind of topic could be a really great one, right? Like right now it's VHS and Betamax or right, whatever it is between magic and technology and people are drawing up sides. Which, which one are we going to pick? Which one is going to be the winner? And then when you do that, who wins and who loses, right? And I think it's, um, yeah, the Tolkien thing as well. Technology always wins out and magic proceeds for the world. Well, what if it's the other way? You know, what if it what if it goes the other way, but magic is more of a rarefied thing that only the upper classes get a benefit from it, right? Sure. That could be a really interesting way to uh, to sort of mess up the hair of some of these ways that we like to think about these these genres. Which is another thing that I'm always doing in my classes is saying like, well, we'll think, and this is something that I think people can do uh, with their own worlds. If you're building a high fantasy world or whatever it is, start listing all of those markers that you say this is what makes this a high fantasy world. But somebody sits down and they instantly see elves and dragons and they know it's a fantasy world. If you start listing those out, you can very, very deliberately pick which ones are you going to choose to bring in and then which ones might you choose to turn on their head, right? I mean, just nice. which ones would just be very, very different and still call it a high fantasy, right? That's where you're going to get a lot closer, I think, to something really unique that other people haven't seen before just by being that deliberate. And it seems like with these decisions, these are very, very specific decisions that you need to make about the level of magic and the level of technology in a society. And just those things could suddenly give you that little edge that's like, ooh, this is really interesting. No, I've never seen this before. This is like when you're asking questions about uh, finding examples. Well, if it's hard to find an example and it makes sense, that's usually a pretty fertile area to then start developing. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the one that I can't believe I didn't mention and didn't think of immediately when we were talking about settings that use both technology and magic is Star Wars. I was just going to say, yeah. That's oh exactly my right. goodness. The right lightsaber there. is the ultimate magic and technology. Yep. In a stick, in yep. stick form, it's dangerous, stick form. <laughs> stabby, glowy, stick form. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. And so don't feel like you have to stick to high fantasy areas. Like absolutely you can go into a sci-fi or a space opera area and still be looking at these kinds of um, interactions and these kinds of questions.